Tropical Depression 3 forms in the Eastern Pacific on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 12th. Well, finally, we've got our tropical cyclone formation and it is Tropical Depression 3E that has formed in the Eastern Pacific and we are expecting a storm out of this one and probably a hurricane. That's at least what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting as it ventures out over the open waters of the Eastern Pacific. We are code blue for the Western Pacific right now as well. We'll come on to that later. Day 42 of the Atlantic hurricane season and we've also got a 40% chance of an area of interest in the subtropical zone that could end up developing into a cyclone, a named storm, whether it's tropical or subtropical, still question marks, but my guess is it probably will end up being tropical at some point. Tropical Depression 3 moving out towards the west northwest in the eastern Pacific Ocean won't be a threat to land, which is good news. Um, and it will likely strengthen and then weaken as it moves further out to sea and then could possibly be a threat to Hawaii later on down the line. In the Western Pacific, we've also given a 40% chance to a very broad system that could end up being two systems uh, that will struggle uh, a battle against each other there in the Western Pacific around Luzon in the Philippines and into the South China Sea. Big uncertainties about that one. Keep watching that closely. Uh, but we are concerned about rainfall amounts over the whole region over there. There, and that's why we've gone code blue on Ticos. North Indian Ocean looking fairly quiet, cloud cover is elevated, uh, pretty much the same picture as what we saw yesterday. Satellite imagery for the last 24 hours then, you'll note uh, a few red zones, some of those near India, also a big area down near the Philippines from that uh, area of interest, the uh, wider area around it, it should be said, uh, a few areas delivering lots of rainfall, mainly over the water, which is good news. The Eastern Pacific, this is 3E, a close-up of it right now, we've got it on rapid scan, and it's looking pretty decent, the rotation needs to improve a little bit more. Um, and it looks like the stacking isn't particularly well in order right now either the low level and the mid level but it's going to get better and this system has a decent chance now that it already is a tropical depression uh, to become a much more uh, structured storm later on down the line it's had a good start um, when you look towards the center of it there it's blowing up good amounts of convection uh, so the high level and mid level cloud is looking good. I think the low level though probably still needs a bit more work uh, But not much can be said from this high up from the satellites And this is the wide view looking out over the whole area. It's got a good area around it there um, No dry air problems at the moment And so it's probably going to have a good chance over sea surface temperatures that are still warm for a good while yet At least for the next two or three days Atlantic looking like this right now as well and if we go up here you'll see a little area of thunderstorms there that's going to be that 40% chance system that we're watching closely. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are very warm off the coast of Mexico over 30 degrees Celsius and extending it further out to sea uh, but you'll note there between Hawaii and the East Pack there's a bit of a gap and this storm will we uh, struggle through that. The Atlantic is piping hot particularly around southern Florida and the Bahamas well over 30 degrees Celsius by now and the same story off Cuba and towards Louisiana. Gulf Stream really looking hot as well lots of potential there in the Atlantic. Western Pacific, the same story here as well. A very warm sea surface temperature in the South China Sea, although I think these two one or two systems that are on the way will put a dampener on that. Uh, but right now, there's a lot of potential, at least for convective tops, which will produce a lot of rainfall, if not a potential uh, strong tropical storm. North Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal still looking warm, 30 degrees plus. Arabian Sea is much lower as is usual for the time of year. Southwest Indian Ocean is well into its off season now, so temperatures are very low compared to what we usually see during the season. And in the Australian region also only a few points of the coast there reaching 26 degrees and in the South Pacific a similar story there but hanging in at around 20 degrees south in one or two spots still at this point a bit, a, a bit above average over there in the South Pacific. 
East Pack is also above average in the Far East, but still areas that are below average between there and Hawaii. El Nino effect clear to see there with some very warm anomalies in the um, equator region near the Galapagos and in the Atlantic very much above average still near Florida around the Bahamas and also in the Eastern Atlantic. Maybe slightly less than in previous updates, but uh, still very much up there up to three degrees above. This is the oceanic heat content for the Caribbean Sea looking very much uh, like we've got a lot of heat potential there and around the Bahamas and the Gulf of Mexico. Eastern Pacific uh, still looking okay as well in a few spots especially further east along the coast of Mexico and in the Western Pacific also looking pretty decent with very high amounts of uh, ocean heat content there near the coast of the Philippines. So this is the GFS model run out to five days and you'll quite easily be able to determine the formation of this cyclone in the Atlantic right there in the middle of the ocean not really affecting anything quite broad at first and it will continue that way for quite a while. It's quite weak it doesn't get very strong probably 50 miles per hour at most indicated by the model maybe 60 at a push and that will happen earlier on and then it will start a weakening trend and struggle to reattain tropical storm intensity later on. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out, of course, for this depression. What happens next? The GFS has it developing into a hurricane. There it goes. Category 1, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, not sure on that yet. Category 1 is the expected peak from the National Hurricane Center and possibly one or two systems forming right at the end of that five-day period as well in the Eastern Pacific. So potentially one or two more systems on the way on this well-anticipated wave train that people are... Uh, sort of hoping happens pretty soon. Western Pacific, we're looking out for these two systems, or at least two rotations that we're looking for. One of them might pass through northern Luzon and just about into the South China Sea, close to the coast of the Philippines. That second, much broader one, moving up towards the northwest. It's a big mess that transpires here in the Western Pacific over the next five days. I'm not confident that either of them will form, but certainly the potential is there for one or maybe even both of them to develop into tropical cyclones. The northernmost one being much larger, much more widespread in its tropical storm force winds. But it, regardless of development, it's the rainfall that we're more concerned about and there's some very high rainfall amounts that's going to be occurring mainly across the Philippines over the next uh, seven days this is now on the GFS and you'll see there it's uh, a few areas quite far away down on the island of Panay possibly up to 24 inches of rainfall 16 inches in Mindoro and on the western coast of Luzon so that's four to six hundred millimeters of rainfall for a few of those spots that could receive very high high amounts of rain. Look further north for this system eventually moving through the Korean Peninsula, possibly up to 10 inches of rainfall there, that's 250 millimeters, so there could be a very wet sequence for large parts of the western Pacific coastlines in the next week. Into the longer range, we watch the continuous progress of that Atlantic system starts to wander southwards and then it turns back towards the west. Are we seeing loop the loop? It looks like we are, at least on that latest GFS run, but other models aren't quite as confident on any of this and that's why we're keeping it at 40% right now, uh, but I think that it, we're probably going to at least see a depression out of this, whether it gets to storm status and whether it's tropical or subtropical, that remains to be seen. Eastern Pacific watching out for two new tropical cyclones after 3E uh, that develop out over there and one gets quite close to the coast of Mexico, a little bit of haphazard travel there moving northwest. The other one doesn't last very long, a very small system that stays out to sea. And then of course 3E continuing to monitor this one. It reaches the Hawaiian Islands around the 19th, 20th of July, skimming the northern part of the islands as a developing tropical storm. And then it gets stronger because the sea surface temperatures ramp up over there in the, in the western or central Pacific and could get stronger. Here's the western Pacific into the east China to see over there that first system swiping into South Korea and then what happens over here another enormous rotation that starts to brew up with maybe a tropical cyclone inside that a very complex and complicated scenario uh, with a huge system likely well not likely but possibly forming there in the South China Sea in the long range uh, and another system possibly popping up there near the Philippines my goodness it's busy 
you can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store as usual, where we have all of our items and full season and individual animations on request. Also, are still waiting for Hone, and 3E won't count. In the silly range then, we're looking at the further progress of 3E and gosh it becomes a long tracking storm and it's not done at that point either. Towards the later days of July it starts to rev up again as it starts to approach Japan and then starts to recurve at last quite quickly in the end but strengthens as it does so getting probably to category 3 status right at the end of that 16 day period but that's still a big question mark of course given how far away it is from where we are right now. That's a whole ocean apart almost and would end up being one of the longer tracking storms that we've seen. That enormous cyclone eventually moves through the Gulf of Tonkin and makes landfall in Vietnam and then this second system moves through another one, moving through the Visayas region of the Philippines, possibly as a weak typhoon, and then continuing westwards becomes extremely large as well in the South China Sea and then sweeps through Hainan and then once again reaching uh, Vietnam, not far from Hanoi probably, as a Category 1 typhoon by the looks of things. So certainly we're on notice for this part of the Western Pacific over over the next two weeks with potentially three systems affecting land. Whew, well, you can talk about all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat from all around the world. Fantastic. Well, what happened on this day? It was July 12th, 2006 when we had a somewhat similar scenario. We had Typhoon Billis, another very broad system, uh, and that one went on to strike Taiwan, a well-known uh, bad storm of the day uh, that went through to Taiwan and China. Its broad uh, uh, appearance caused a lot of issues over there. We also had Hurricane Bud, which was rapidly intensifying at the time, a small system, and the larger Carlotta, which was further east and was a lot more mellow, was strengthening much more slowly and still a tropical storm at this point. Back to today, we're code blue, but still no new named storms yet. The next name in the Atlantic is Don, the Eastern Pacific, Calvin, should be here soon. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone. It won't be Calvin Hone though. We don't do dull vowel names anymore. In the Western Pacific, Talim is next up. And in the North Indian Ocean, it is Tej, all vying to be number 28 for the year so far. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, the new naming lists coming up. Alvaro is first up, the Australian region, Jasper. And in the South Pacific, next up is Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.